Relationships are everything. The quality of your life is very much, in many ways, hinged on the quality of the relationships you have around you. It's very much hinged on the quality of the people who influence your decision-making ability, the people who um, influence your thinking process, but also the people who inspire you. Um, of all the things that I wish um, that perhaps I could have paid more attention to um, at a younger age, I would have probably um, referred back to this um, reference to relationships. I had always thought that it's something to be noble of to say I'm a ma man-made person. You've heard people say um, he's a self-made millionaire or self-made billionaire um, or self-made individual. <laughs> I'm reminded um, by a statement um, by L. Nightingale. He said, all men are self-made or all people are self-made or women are self-made but only the successful would admit it. <laughs> I thought that was interesting because that is true. Most people claim success when um, it's evident that it's been successful, but when things haven't worked quite well, um, no one wants to say, I, you know, I, I was the cause. But if there is success, we tend to say, I am the cause. Um, but I would have wished if I had a uh, a magic one, that that was one area that I focused on. The importance of forging and forming and developing and building and nurturing um, good quality relationships. We're influenced by many factors in life. One is our environment. The second is the events that have happened in our lives, good, bad or indifferent. Um, the next are the dreams we have of the future the goals we have, the visions we have of the future. We're also influenced by circumstances that would kind of be under our control. But one of the most important influences that we have um, are the relationships that we have and the people we meet. I, um, I look back at my life and I am I'm, I'm really um, humbled, humbled by the fact that at every single turning point in my life that I can attribute probably 80 or 90 percent of my success or my um, progress to someone else's instructions, someone else's words, someone else's um, experiences. I talk about the value of the leverage of other people's experiences. I talk about that a lot because I really um, am a, a firm believer that the quality of my life is really um, based on the people who have poured into me wisdom, understanding, knowledge, experiences, some of them knowingly and some of them indirectly. But I believe uh, that the quality of your relationships and the quality of your future and the quality of your life will also depend on the quality of the relationships you have. And so one of the things that I want to talk about today is the importance of recognizing that your future is hidden in people. And that means that whether the people are deserving of influencing you or not, they will play a part. At a young age, one of the things that we do not have quite developed is the ability to think, deductively especially. But we don't have that um, faculty of our mind developed well enough to make decisions. A young child at a young age cannot tell the difference between what's right and wrong. And that's why a baby will pick up a piece of, um, you might say, magnet and put it in his mouth or put it in her mouth. A baby will, when they're born normally, look at their hands and be wondering, what is this? And they only recognize that it's part of their body when they put it in their mouth and bite it and it hurts. At that point in time, the baby cannot think for itself. And so the baby relies on people who are you know, either guardians or parents, people who love them, to look after them, make decisions for them. But as soon as you go beyond the age of where you can actually start deciding for yourself, one of the most important decisions you have to make is who you're going to surround yourself with. Um, someone once said that the quality of your success 
will always be based on the number of books you've read and the number of people you've allowed to influence you, either through books or in person or by association. And so what I'd like you to do is consider this um, principle of having quality relationships. In your life, you have different, what I call, circles of influence. You have an inner circle, you have an outer circle. You can make those circles um, as many as you want them to be. But it's important to distinguish each circle from the other and the criteria for being in each circle. A lot of times I've shared uh, some of my personal beliefs about relationships and other people that I've shared it with have perceived it to be a little bit strict. And I'm going to share some of them with you here. Um, Obviously, I'm being very sincere and being very truthful. The goal for me is not for me to change your mind or thinking. The goal for me here is for me to share my ideas and for you to process the ideas and ask yourself a simple question. Can this idea help me? Can it improve the quality of my life? And if the answer is yes, then you're welcome to use the ideas. If the answer is no, then by all means, you can reject it. But before you even go using it, it's best to study other people's information and gather ideas together because no one has all the answers. And I certainly do not consider myself to be an exception to that principle or rule. One of the principles that I have about relationships is this. That every relationship you have around you um, plays a positive or negative role in your life. There are no such things as a neutral relationship. Someone is either pulling you up or building you up or pulling you down. That's a fact. And I see relationships like uh, a building. Think about a building and every building who there's a tall building has um, what we call um, elevators, escalators, um, or lifts. Um, a mechanical device that takes you up from one floor to another, especially in high buildings. And so some relationships will pull you down or take you down to the lower floor, and some will elevate you. And one of the things you have to do is get really skilled at qualifying your relationships. I have what I call um, my inner circle and my outer circle. In my inner circle, I put people there who I can afford to surround myself with consistently and regularly, and this would include some family members, some friends, some associates, some business colleagues, maybe some um, uh, mentors. On the outer circle, this would also include some family members, some friends, some business colleagues, and some associates. There's a big difference. My inner circle is based on what I call the the group of people that I want to keep expanding my communication Um, I want to keep expanding my um, association with. Why? Because they inspire me, they motivate me, they educate me, they give me insightful information. More than anything, they rebuke me, they correct me. Uh, Many people are looking for friends um, that would accept them just the way they are. Um, I'm slightly different. I don't want friends that just accept me the way I am. I want friends that have... Uh, the courage to look at me the way I am and accentuate my positive aspects and qualities, but also draw to my attention what I need to change so that I can achieve my dreams and goals. Now, let's go back and just think about that. Um, I'm not suggesting that they talk about my weaknesses and areas of development always. No, what I'm saying, it has to be constructive. They have to know what my vision is for the future. And they have to have the, the courage to say, listen, I love you too much to leave you just the way you are. Um, I'm not going to be one of those friends that just smiles at you and I watch you go down the drain. I'm going to tell you what you're good at, but I'm going to tell you what I think perhaps could improve the quality of your life and help you move faster towards your goal. Those people go into what I call my inner circle. On my outer circle, I have different categories. I have people who perhaps I would meet maybe on a monthly basis and I can spend time with them, but I don't spend a lot of time with them. Why? Because some of them are very pessimistic. 
and I have to manage my mind. You see, the garden of your mind is something that I wish we understood as much as um, we should have. Because you see, the most important gift you have is the mind. And I don't think many people understand how powerful the mind is, but also how delicate the mind is. And um, if I walked into your living room, for example, and I um, picked up uh, the garbage can outside and I just walked into your living room and I spilled the garbage can all over the living room that you call your home, one of the things that you might be tempted to do is uh, perhaps take matters into your hands and perhaps um, either throw me out, but before you throw me out, you might physically correct me <laughs> or you might call the police and get someone to correct me through the law, but you would not take it lightly. In the same way, we have people coming into our lives every day and they are pouring and dumping garbage in our mind. And we don't recognize that our mind is the creative part of our life. That In our minds, we have the, this unique ability to use our imagination to create, to pre-play the future, to replay the past. And so every day, we have to stand guard at the gate of our mind and hold off any information, um, ideas, thoughts, words that are not inspiring, that are not in harmony with the vision we have for the future. We've got to keep them out. And that includes voices of people that could even be your family members and your friends. So what I have in my outer circle is a few people who I can meet them regularly, maybe once or twice a month, maybe for an hour. I can catch up with them. I can give them love. I can express love, but I can't stay with them too long because they're too negative. Or some of them would have this un unconscious um, way of... Um, maybe feeding you with information that generates fear um, and doubt and disbelief and um, anxiety. So I tend to always ask um, a few questions, which is, is this relationship building my faith or is it building my fear? Is this relationship pushing me towards my dreams and goals and vision or pulling me back? Is this relationship... Um, empowering me or disempowering me. But here is what's interesting. Because the relationship is not just about me, I'm also asking the question, is my investment in this relationship providing a return? Not for me, but for the individual. For, the, for example, um, if the relationship is such that um, the advice I give, the, the love I give, um, the, the provision I, pro I bring to the table is uh, welcomed, if it um, has a, some value, then it means I will keep giving it. But there are some relationships where um, it doesn't matter what you give, it's never quite enough. And for those relationships, it's important you know um, what they want and you try to give them what they want and what they need. I should say not want, what they need but also that you limit yourself um, in try not to give, I wouldn't say too much of yourself, but try not to give more than you can afford to give. So relationships are important. Uh, in any area of life, in any business transaction, it happens because of a relationship. In any um, relationship between two people, it happens because of a need. So I would simply suggest that uh, as much as you might consider it to be a little bit wrong to have conditions for your friendship, I think you should. I believe one of the most important things that we all should have are rules. We have values. Our values help us form our beliefs. Our beliefs help us determine our priorities. Our priorities should help us identify our rules and standards. And we should have amongst those rules, non-negotiating standards. You see, exception is the enemy of execution. Everyone will say, I have rules. I have standards. 
But every now and then we make compromises. And therefore it means we don't have non-negotiating standards. And so when you see relationships where there are no rules, it's very similar to a country where there are no rules. It means there are no laws. In the same way, you have to start to come up with what I call um, a checklist of criteria, of, of uh, items that have to be met before you can invest your time, before you can invest your emotions, before you can invest your energy, um, your resources, you can invest perhaps uh, whatever else you might have. It's important to have conditions. Those conditions are not meant to be what I call um, uh, they have to be they have to be known they have to be shared so for example I'll, I'll give you make it practical if one of your conditions for being having someone in your inner circle is that they have to be honest it's important you stick to that rule and have it as a non-negotiating standard because it means if you have someone who has been disloyal or dishonest you move them into the outer circle if you have a condition that says, and if for anyone to be in my inner circle, they have to be loving and kind. This is, that's a rule. If you have one that says they have to have integrity and they have to be generous. These are all specific non-negotiating rules that you might say, you cannot be that close to me if you're not honest, if you're not kind, if you're not generous, if you have no integrity. Because what it will end up what you will end up with is a relationship where one person gets hurt. So I think you need rules. You need conditions. Um, you need to have a, a checklist where you evaluate individuals before you bring them into your life. There will be, as you go into your outer circle, lesser rules. And for those where you have lesser rules, you might have perhaps a, maybe a, an open mind about how much you expect from the people in those groups. Um, but those are the outer circle. When it comes to the inner circle, you've got to be careful. Um, in choosing friends, you want to have friends that have similar values, friends that um, perhaps uh, uh, know what they believe in and are willing to stand up for what they believe in. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as yours. You can have very different perspectives about life. But it's, it's important to know what the next person thinks. The next person should have an opinion. And so let me probably end by saying this. Uh, relationships are everything. And the relationships you have in your life today is really um, going to determine um, the kind of future you actually have tomorrow. And so one of the key things you can do for yourself today, sit down, pull out a piece of paper and ask yourself the question, who are the top 10 people um, who influenced me in my life? And just write their names down. And then write down next to each name the qualities of those individuals. Uh, what you believe their strongest points are, what you believe perhaps their general qualities are. Identify each and every one of those. Identify what you believe their values might be. And then on a different piece of paper, write down your values and write down um, your principles and your philosophy and your beliefs. And then do a comparison. Find out which and where you have similarities in what you agree on, perhaps what you disagree on. The importance of doing this is it brings to your focus um, the importance of um, revising and reviewing who is in your inner circle. We make this mistake, and I've seen it for too long, and I did this for a long time, whereby you've been friends with someone since high school. And because you were friends during high school, you remain friends until you're 70. Now I've done that, I haven't lived to be 70 yet, um, but I've done that in many occasions. You, you've known someone since they were you know, childhood friends and then you, you feel you have this obligation to still maintain that level of intimacy with them, which is um, not right. You should qualify people um, and you should also have the courage to remove people from your friends or relationship um, list especially when they don't qualify to be there. Because you see, like I said at the start, uh, you're influenced by a number of factors, environment, events, the dreams and goals you might have, the decisions you've made so far, but more, imp more importantly, the, the relationships you have. 
Um, the quality of your life, I believe, will always be based on the quality of the relationships you have around you and those that influence you. So it's important you develop this strict um, process of choosing your relationships because by choosing your relationships, you are indirectly choosing the future you're going to have.